Dearly beloved, we thank God for this day. We thank you, God, for we thank God for this time. We thank God for every moment in life. And may I invite you to a word of prayer before we start. God our Father, we thank you that you give us opportunity to be alive, alive to continue loving and serving you. And now continue, God, uh, enabling us to find you. Because finding you is a life, and we pray the Lord you find us. Because when we find us, it is our security. We pray that you bless us as we share through again. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, God is good. And I will always mention God is good. It is a slogan because he remains our father, he remains our, our keeper. He remains someone who secures our lives. And so this time, we continue with our Finding God series. Because finding him is our security. Finding him is our safety. Finding God is our life. And so we shall continue doing more of the word of God. Because actually the word of God is life. And the word brings an encouragement. Now in our last episodes we have been looking at various people. And we shall continue looking at those people because they teach us a lot. And as a person, I have interacted with biblical personalities and the men and women that offered themselves to serve God. The previous was Elijah the prophet, the prophet that did lots because his yearning was in serving God. And we shall continue with those men and women because the way they lived, those that pleased God, it was life for them. He kept along with them. And it's our desire, even during our generation, that we keep with God. And so that as we keep with him, we keep searching him. He also keeps searching us. And the moment we are in one accord with him, it is our life. It is our security. It is our comfort. We are in a world that is so tumultuous. We are in a world that is so soiled. Just like those men and women, for instance, Prophet Elijah was in a, in a time which was so bad, but he leaves you and I an example. And so we shall continue with Elijah's successor. And Elijah's successor is a man called Elisha. Elisha is known to be a follower of Prophet Elijah. And so we shall dive ourselves into scripture and see how he came to be. And so prophet Elisha is the man. And this is what we read from scripture. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, we are talking about prophet Elisha now, not Elijah, because Elijah, we have dived into it, we have read about it, we have, you know, we have discovered a lot about Elijah. But before he leaves the scene, this is what he does. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, and so that the Bible says, so he departed. When you talk about so he departed, we are meaning Elijah. And departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with the 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak on, upon him. And he left, he means Elisha. Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, meaning Elijah said to Elisha, go back again for what have I done to you. And in verse 21, that Elijah returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. Praise God, brethren. We see prophet, the man, Elijah, leaving someone behind who would continue his work. 
And when the Bible talks about he assisted him, meaning Elisha became Elijah's assistant during the last times, the last days of prophet Elijah. And so we come with this message. That he's talking about uh, how he came onto the scene. The Bible says he was found plowing, but first he is known by name and the name is Elisha, a son of somebody. This somebody is called Shaphat. And the Bible says that he was found in the garden plowing and taking care of his gardens, a very busy man. And that's where we're going to dwell ourselves. Busy people used by God for God's business. But before I mention anything far, we know that biblical names have meanings. Like Elijah, we explained that. Now, Elisha means God is my salvation. And you remember that actually this is very critical for us. For me, when I, when I hear this, that the name Elisha means God is my salvation. And it is what we are yearning for in the program of finding God. And everywhere that we go, you go to church, you go, you kneel down on your knees and you pray and do whatever you are doing because God is your salvation. So Elisha means God is my salvation. And so he comes onto the scene and Elijah finds him and calls him. And by the way, he doesn't mention much. He just comes with his cloak and taps him on his shoulder. And the man knows that this is God is calling. And so here we find that God used Elijah during his time. Now, we also find that he is going to use Elisha during his time. And now for me, as a, a lesson to me as a Christian and a Christian leader at that, is that actually God uses men and women. God calls people at their own time. One goes, another one comes. And so that ministry continues. And of course, our Lord Jesus Christ gives us an example. Remember that he had the 12 disciples. Even when one went, they had to find another one to replace Judas, who became his betrayer. And so what we learn from this as Christian leaders and as church, that God does not want his work to remain a vacuum. God wants his work to continue because he desires men and women to serve him. And so in this case, we see Elijah not living a vacuum at all. And so we encourage ourselves that in this whole thing of Elijah, Elisha, there is a program of mentorship. And so as you do your ministry and as you do your work, by the way, even in a home, parenting is mentorship. Whatever you are doing is mentorship. You are a father, you are mentoring someone. You are a mother, you are mentoring someone. Do you have children? Those are your successors. Elijah ensured that he couldn't live without leaving someone on the scene. And someone who is um, a courageous man, someone who would continue with the ministry. Now for you and me, it's actually it's a lesson that we pick from this man, Elijah, that he couldn't just live like that. And during our generation, we appeal, I mean, we mention this to whoever minds to listen. And you know, there are parents, who need to put in time and have their children move along with them. And I'm so glad to be hearing parents who mention time with their children, you know, sitting with them, mentoring them, speaking to them, praying with them. And this we see Elijah is going to do with Elisha, who is his assistant. And so when you talk about Elijah, Elisha is mentorship program proper. And so this is something that I thought that I should begin with when we are talking about uh, the prophet who hands over to another prophet, a prophet, a man who hands over to another one to continue with the ministry. And so Elisha was in the field, the Bible is saying, that was in the field plowing with the oxen. And the Bible says that actually he had 12, of course there are two, two, and they were plowing. And the Bible mentioned that he was with the 12 and so something that I find very, very interesting is he lives. He lives and follows 
Elijah without hesitation. There are certain excuses that we give. Even when we're in ministry, God wants to send us to do this, to do A, B, C, D. There are usually excuses. But we also tap from what the Lord Jesus Christ did with the 12. When he called Peter and James and John and whoever, Andrew, the rest, especially the fishermen, the Bible says that they just left everything and followed Jesus. And then when we find the call of Matthew, the Le Matthew Levy, who was a tax collector, he was in his office, the Bible says, and doing his business. And the Lord Jesus Christ calls and he leaves everything and follows Jesus Christ. And so we see that there's something peculiar about this man in their service to God. Because they knew whom they were following, because they knew who God was to them. And so to us who are living now, my brethren, that God is our life. God is our everything. And when he desires us to serve him, may we serve him just like this man did. And the point to note is Elisha was a busy man. Elisha was actually looking after the oxen. I mean, doing using his oxen to plow his grounds. Now God, from time immemorial, has used the busy people. So let me, let me address busy people, busy men, busy women, that you need to spare time and serve God, even when you are doing your work, but God can still use you to do ministry. And a few examples that I want to mention here, and then I will mention something else, and then I will stop. The point is, are you a busy person? Now, in your business, God can use you in his business. And scripture shows us that God calls those who are busy and they serve him. We shall begin, the list is long, but just a few of them. As an example, Moses. Moses was a busy man, actually was looking after his father-in-law's ship on the Mount Horeb, Horeb. And this is when God finds him. Busy man. And so you may be busy, but God can find you there and call you for his service. In whatever capacity that he can use you, he can still use you. Look at, you know, Gideon. Gideon, the man of valor, the, 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 one of the judges of Israel. He was in a threshing ground. Actually, he was busy threshing his wheat near the wine press. And God finds him there in his business. And God calls him, uses him mightily in Israel. And the reason why they have written about him in the scripture. We also talk about David. David is a man after God's own heart. And that's another example. We said actually he was looking after his father's ship and they waited. I mean, he was almost left out. But until the Bible says, until he came, that's when they offered the sacrifice. And he was the one that God was looking for to lead his people. Now, David was a busy man. And we look at Elisha here with the man that we're talking about, plowing. And then we look at the man Nehemiah. Nehemiah, a great man in the Bible, the governor. You see, he was a cupbearer in the king's palace, and he was busy there. But God, you know, churned his heart. You know, he moved him until he came and he was looking. I mean, he became uh, someone to uh, renovate, to rehabilitate Jerusalem. And so God can use you, my brother. God can use you, my sister, in your business that, uh, to bring his glory. And then we look at Amos the scamot tree, I mean, he was a farmer. We look at the New Testament. I've already mentioned a few people there. Now, God uses a person who expects to be used. And that's actually very, very critical. God uses a person who expects to be used. Are you busy? God can use you in your business to do his business. And in your business, are you a father? Are you a mother? Are you a teacher? Are you a doctor? Are you a, a lawyer? Are you a whoever? God can still use you wherever you are and please expect to be used of God accept God's call to do his ministry God uses a person who never gives up and Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5 chapter 6 I mean Galatians chapter 6 verse 19 and the Bible um, uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 I mean and the Bible says that and let us not get grow weary of doing good for in a due time, in a due season, we shall reap, reap, if we do not give up. Now, busy, keep busy, keep doing good. Now, if there is anything good that you are doing, please keep doing it. And God promises reward. And so the reason why we are talking about this man, Elisha, is actually to pick a few lessons. A busy man, 
and God used him mightily. And we shall be, at, in time to come, we shall be looking at a few things about this man, Elisha, because actually he lives as a great example and how we desire to find men and women whom God is going to use. And finally, in your ministry, in our ministry, we need assistants. We need people that will replace us. And I've already, talked, I've already addressed the parents, I've already talked about the parents, mothers, fathers, and even those that are in positions of leadership. But just to mention that Moses needed Aaron, his elder brother, to walk along with him. And may we have the same, that actually you'll have someone to, you know, to talk with at workplace, someone who will encourage you, someone who, is, who will enable you. And Joshua needed Caleb, and Caleb and some other people, remember, and so we desire people that uh, will be closer to us. David needed Jonathan. Jonathan was a son of King Saul, but they were so close. When you find someone close, you know, you talk to, because actually it is this, there can be a time when you are so discouraged, when you are so devastated, but when somebody who is a close, a, a companion, someone whom you share with, may not necessarily be your wife, May not necessarily be your husband. Yes, you begin with your wife and your husband, if you, yes, but someone also whom you can encourage yourselves with. And this is in the matters that glorify God. I mean, in the matters that glorify God. And then uh, Paul needed, you see, he had people like Barnabas, like Timothy, like uh, Titus, like uh, all those, Cyrus. And so, friends, God is calling us through this episode that Elisha was a, was a man like any one of us, but God used him. I found him busy, but he called him to come. He was Elijah's assistant, and he carried on with ministry. Now, you and I, may God use us, may God use you, that in the ministry there will not be a gap, but we shall progress one by one. Even when I leave, there should be someone to continue with the ministry. Now, parent, if, after you leave, your children should be enabled enough to carry on with your estate, with your work, with everything that you do, but you need to enable them now. Elijah did enablement. May God enable us to enable others to move along with us. And so this ministry may continue in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.